Charles Furniture Collection mostly based on some really good, famous antiques in stately homes, in Christie's and Sotheby's, uh, antique uh, auctions, uh, 18th, 19th century English and French antiques. We try to use the same techniques uh, as the original antiques were made. That way it's easier to look like an antique if we're doing it the same way the antique was done. And we're lucky enough to have the skills to do it that way. Carvers at Jonathan Charles are skill-wise probably the highest skilled people in our factory. Uh, carving is, is an art and really the, the, the skills speak for themselves. You look at the piece of furniture, the, our carving is fantastic. None of the carving on our furniture is, uh, is applied uh, where it's just done as a moulding and glued on. Uh, all our carving is hand carved onto the actual solid components, which is very rare these days. I think our most popular pieces are the ones with, with the, the high perceived value. There's so much work involved in that. The, the wow factor, that must have taken ages to do that. Well, it does take ages to do that, but the, you don't see them around anymore because those skills have died. They're not there anymore. Marketry is uh, an incredible technique. Marketry is basically uh, as highly skilled as painting, only their, their medium is veneer. I, I'm a cabinet maker. Uh, I've been making furniture since I was 12 years old, and the marquetry, you need so much patience to sit down and do that marquetry. I, I would go crazy if I was to make that piece myself. A lot of the pieces that have incredibly fine marquetry, people make the mistake of thinking it's painted on. Uh, it's not. It's genuine hand-cut marquetry. Trying to find good hardware for furniture is very, very difficult. One day I got a little tired of having to buy, you know, a thousand of something that I didn't want, so I decided let's try making our own hardware. And from basically that day on, we've made everything. Having our own foundry allows us to design hardware for each individual piece of furniture. So we've got a unique handle for that one piece, we've got a unique hinge on that one piece, and it means the, the attention to detail on each individual piece can be limitless. We can make a screw that just goes on that one piece of furniture if we need to, and that's a great strength to have. And this is really where the, the detail side of what we do really does stand out. Uh, we could have a marquetry inlay detail on the draw front and a handle that matches that, uh, the same detailing, like a swags and tail in the marquetry and a swags and tail in the, in the handle. It's fantastic and nobody's paying that much attention to detail to an item. To me, the, the hardware is the jewellery, the finishing touch that just makes a great piece of furniture fantastic. Lost wax casting is an unbelievable process. It's, it's basically it's the same technique that, that jewellery makers use uh, for making rings and, and all sorts of jewellery. You have to start off by carving from a block of, of wax. 
uh, start by carving the original the way you want it. Then we have a mold making process to make duplicates of that master carving. Uh, so the, the real artisan is the wax carver who carves the original. It's very labor intensive, there's a lot of materials in it, and the reason you would do wax carving instead of maybe sand casting is you do it on a component, you want to do the fine detail. You're wanting to pick up all of these intricate details. It amazes some people that uh, some of the details on our furniture are actually painted by hand. Uh, there's a few pieces that we've got where there's uh, incredibly fine painted pieces and people say, is that decoupage, is that printed and stuck on? We don't do any decoupage, it's all hand painting. Eglemise is a really interesting process. The process that we're following for Eglemise is the exact same process that was done hundreds of years ago. It was developed by the Egyptians and refined by a French guy called Glommy. Basically is reverse painting on the back of glass, uh, which is very finely done using gold leaf and, and, and shading and etching and engraving techniques. And then we use genuine silver leaf to uh, put a mirrored background to that painting. You can always tell an Eglemise mirror uh, because it, you can see the squares of the silver leaf uh, through the glass. It's imperfect, uh, which is great because antiques are not perfect. So it's, it's great to have that natural look that it comes out naturally that way and it just looks old instantly. It's a very difficult process. Very few people know how to do it. If you take a piece of furniture and finish it fantastically, it, people could imagine it's an antique. And it's, it's all in the finish. That, that Our look is so dependent on getting the finish just right. Even something as simple as when you put your handle on, shading around the handle. Because an antique, when you clean your antique for 100 years, you're not getting into those corners perfectly. You're leaving all the dirt and the grime in, in, in there. It's really important in what we do, understanding how to distress it understanding where a piece of furniture would have bangs and knocks and scrapes and where it wouldn't. furniture person, when they look at a piece of furniture for the first time, the way they judge for themselves is this, is this good quality or bad quality. If you watch somebody, they open a drawer and if they see a nice drawer inside, their assumption is it's a lovely piece of furniture. Our drawer is, I'm very proud of our drawer, it's a great drawer. to be making something that you know is going to be around in somebody's home. I like to think that what we're doing really is heirloom furniture. It's furniture that is of a quality that will last forever and of a style that is going to be around forever. Uh, and I think it's going to be handed down from generation to generation. And that's a great feeling. You know, it's, you're not just making something that's a temporary thing. It's a permanent part of somebody's home.